you guys welcome back to the channel and i have a video clip i should say audio clip of an interview that celine had done and they were questioning her on her behavior that we saw that was quite interesting at the dinner party and if you haven't seen that episode it is on the channel and you'll get to see it all in its full glory about what they're talking about and Celine's behavior. But before we jump into this video, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. You like the video, smash the like button and drop a comment down in the comment section below. So I'm going to let you guys listen to the audio clip and then I will be back and we are going to discuss this. It's pretty interesting, her responses to some of the questions that they asked her, but here we go dinner party and we know that's where the drama tends to happen now a lot of it was focused around the relationship of Celine and Anthony as Anthony left the honeymoon early and that whole drama played out in a group setting we are joined by Celine one half of the couple right now how are you hi I'm good thank you how are you Great. Good, thanks. Celine, thanks for chatting to us. For those not playing along at home, you're married to Anthony. Honeymoon didn't really go according to plan. He hightailed it, and you guys faced each other for the first time last night at the dinner party. Celine, how do you feel you came across last night on MAFs? Yeah, look, watching it back, look, it, it wasn't, it was really hard to watch and, and see how everything did unfold. Um, so, yeah, it was a little bit disappointing to see, yeah, how it was shown. <laughs> So what really happened then? Because we're ready to judge the situation as viewers and, yeah, you weren't painted in a very nice light. We were pretty angry with how, you know, the behaviour played out. But is that not how it went down in real life? Um, well, look, there was, you know, there was some context. And I did actually mention that during last night, um, you know, I guess everyone, um, well, most viewers are probably in line with Anthony, which, to be honest, I don't blame them. Like, I did come across as being bitchy, but that's not who I am. Like, I unfortunately went into protection mode um, after, you know, I did mention several incidents that did happen, for example, things being thrown in my face, um, you know, more than three times. So it's like, I did try to talk, I got brushed off, and unfortunately at the end it was, you know, the end of the night when he dragged me away to have a conversation, and yeah, I was a few drinks in, didn't want to have a conversation then, and I, and I believe had the conversation been earlier in the night, it might have gone a different way. It's always the way with the dinner parties, isn't it? Um, to go back a little bit further, I've got some audio here from the actual honeymoon. Um, this is you and Anthony, sort of just before he walked out. Have a listen. I mean, I'm definitely not saying you're not a man or anything like that. So all the goading behind closed doors, the, you're going to have a boo-hoo. I hey, say you're going to have a boo-hoo. Yes, you did. I've never really had a guy be at that low point and be vulnerable or whatever else it is. Okay, so that was another thing, again, that was painted like almost, and, you know, I'd like to give you the opportunity to clear this up. Do you see vulnerability in men as a weakness or as a, Absol as a good thing? Absolutely not. No way in the world. I have a son. Like, I definitely d did not put him down for being vulnerable, and I did support him with, 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 you know, expressing some of these feelings as well, which unfortunately isn't painted in that view. Can you understand why... People would be pretty upset, though. Like, there's been multiple times when you've said a man doesn't behave like that or a man shouldn't do that or a man shouldn't, um, you know, say that or that's not how a man should behave. Just those statements, even out of context, those statements are just really um, setting the whole move of toxic masculinity back a little bit just by – can you see how that's come across? Absolutely. Of course I can, 100%. And it's definitely a nice thing to say. Um However, I ask for things not to happen to me. I ask, I ask for things not to be oh, thrown in my face. Totally, and totally. But that's like, what I mean. But that's when you I mean when you by. say that, you should be saying, you know, no one should do that. It's not just a man shouldn't do that. You know, like that's why it's come what, across what? as as being a little bit desensitive to men. I totally understand, but unfortunately, what was across me was a man, and that's what I was referring to. One hundred percent, girls, guys, it's not fair for me to do it as well. After, you know, numerous times you're saying no, it's the same thing. Same things applies to me. Um, maybe I should have been more specific, but I was I was talking about who was in front of me, unfortunately, at the time. Uh, it's good to hear a little bit of, um, you know, your side of the story and the other side of the coin because you were certainly, certainly given the villain edit last night. 
Uh, Celine from Married at First Sight. It is back tonight, 7.30 on Channel 9. And our Married at First Sight train wreck unpacked podcast. It goes up every Saturday morning on the free listener app. Uh, for now, Celine, thank you so much for the chat. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit for a minute. So you guys listen to the clip in its entirety. What are your thoughts? Now, I find it interesting because I do know that things can be edited a certain way. But I look for things like jump cuts and if the person wasn't actually speaking, maybe the back was turned and we heard audio or something. I did not see that in this particular instance. So I know how, you know, jump cuts and edits and frankenbiting and all of those things work. And in the conversation that we've had when they were camping, the conversation the next day when he sat down to talk to her right before he left, everything was a smooth transition of words that came out of her mouth, which was now we did not get to hear off camera, you know, her calling him a princess, but she did admit to it, we, you know, and then the boohoo statement. She admitted to it, even though we didn't see it. So it's one thing if she denied it, we didn't see it. It could be up for grabs, right, on what could or couldn't have been said. But she admitted to those things that had been said in regards to calling him a princess and, you know, the whole boohoo statement. And then she had her independent interview with production where we saw, you know, the conversation of her not really ever being with a man being so vulnerable and she's like well I mean I'm not calling him that he's not a man but you know and then we got to see more of that where she tried to pretty much get her side of the story in before he arrived to the dinner party and get the girls to pretty much double team triple team quadruple team however many girls that wanted to ride on that whole coattail with her she got them to do it she lobbed a grenade as the experts said and the girls fell for it hook line and sinker and they jumped to her side without each actually not all of the girls but majority of them especially demonica who you know jumped to her side and pretty much he was blindsided the whole conversation at the end of the dinner party he easily came and said I apologize he apologized so many times that it was like okay you you apologize she has to bring some effort and the only thing that she could stand on was you left you left so I don't know I think in this situation it's an issue of backpedaling that's my opinion it's not I can't speak for what she actually knows, thinks, or believes. But in my opinion, it looks like backpedaling because she watched it back and she admittedly said, oh my God, that looks so bad. And then she said, oh no, I don't think that, you know, I have a son. Okay, your mother-son relationship is going to be different than you dealing with a man in a romantic setting. So you're going to act differently. You're going to move differently. I have a 21 year old son. Our relationship is different than I would have with my male partner. So for her to even use that, they're not in the, even in the same ballpark. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I know you do. You guys sound off in my comment section all the time. I absolutely love it. I appreciate all of you guys' comments. So let me know what you think about this clip. And until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.